Jesus. That name that is above every name. That name that every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And well, we're here for another uh, another night of Bible study, another night of, of getting together and um, in your house and in mi casa su casa. And uh, we're, we're, we're good. We're, we're, we're excited about being here tonight uh, and uh, just letting everybody kind of click on uh, as we're kind of prompting everybody to move on. I just got a few announcements that I do want to share and uh, praise the Lord. One of them is, <clears throat> excuse me, we talked about last night, uh, Thursday night, Thursday night here uh, on CTF TV on the riverNJ.com and also on uh, uh, CTF TV as you're watching probably now. Uh, we don't know about Facebook. It may be on, but it's not really going to be a great picture. So your best bet is to go to ctftv.com. Awesome thing. It's all been switched around, so now you can just go on. You click the button right in the middle of the screen, and you go right on live. You don't have to figure out where you got to go. Amen? But it's National Day of Prayer. It will be starting at 6.30. That's the time we are starting. We'll probably start airing around 5.30, just playing some music and some uh, background stuff to get everybody ready and prepared as we get ready for a beautiful night from 6.30 to 8. We're going to be uh, live here. Uh, there'll be some people in here. There'll be some people outside. There'll be some people uh, that we have videos coming in and a lot of different things that I believe that you will be blessed. So I'm encouraging you. Don't go to Facebook. You'll find out. It's not going to be the greatest. So what you need to do is go to www.ctf-tv.com. National Day of Prayer. And at 8 o'clock till 10 o'clock, the national broadcast, which is going throughout uh, the U.S. Amen? So continue to keep praying for us. Um, making a few phone calls this week uh, for some of the things that I shared uh, so please keep praying and uh, keep believing for God to open up the doors and to give us wisdom and discernment in where we need to do and what we need to go. Amen? Also, here, it is um, a mobile food pantry. as at the Pens Grove Hope Mobile uh, at the Old St. James Church in Pens Grove. It will be on Friday. It will be starting at 11 and it will be done at 1. So you stay in your car. Make sure you have a mask. I know all they're going to do is open up your trunk, put your food in, uh, and uh, just to be a blessing. So again, that's the 50, that's the 56 Beach Avenue. Uh, it's on uh, State Street and Beach. It's the church on the corner, which is the uh, old St. James Parish. Uh, it's now a, a, a Hispanic church which is actually a great church. I've had the opportunity. I know uh, J.R. and the pastor and had the opportunity to preach there. It's an awesome, awesome church. Out to the community. So, amen. Prayer request, prayer request please go to our website, www.theriverenj.com. Click on Stay in Touch. It'll drop down. Click it again. Uh, that gives you all the information of all the videos we've been doing. And uh, you can also put a prayer request in the report uh, if you have uh, something that you would like to share with us, and we'll make sure that we get it out to uh, the prayer team. Uh, we have an awesome prayer team at the River Church uh, that just every week, uh, every Wednesday night, they take your prayer request, take whatever you pray for, and they just glorify God. Uh, I'm so thankful for uh, uh, Carla. Robinson and, and uh, Skip uh, Bradford and John Lawler and once in a while there's a few other but they're they're diligent they are they're consistent and God honors that so uh, what a blessing they are again I want to thank uh, uh, Carla and Claudia for Thursday night along with the Salem County Ministerium and those that are Heather who's been putting out the information 
And uh, we're looking forward to having an awesome, awesome time. This nation on Thursday coming together and praying, 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 and praying, believing that God is going to open. Amen. So uh, praise the Lord. So uh, uh, let's open up in prayer and let's just uh, get into tonight's Bible study. Uh, just to remind you tonight, uh, this will be the last night for this week. Um, it, it's for me getting to the point where it's, it's taking up a lot of my 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 time and stuff and everything. So, so I'm probably just going to end up doing it next Monday night. We'll do all Monday nights, and if we if the Lord leads, a week. But uh, we're not going to stay consistent every week. I feel the Lord has uh, given me a release. And uh, so, uh, so there won't be Bible study tomorrow night, but we will be here in CTF TV studios. Remember, also, uh, you can tune in to all the programs that we have. Please check it out, see what we have. We just want to be a blessing to you. Need your input, need some of the things that maybe you would like to see, uh, some new programming, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, but um, we just want to be a blessing to the body of Christ. Amen. There's enough junk out there, and we don't want to have junk. We want to have some good family entertainment, some good family teaching. There's ministers in there that are preaching the sermons. There's food. There's there's uh, talks. There's kids. Lots of kids programming that you can go on and check out. There's movies, uh, old time movies, newer ones, uh, Christ centered movies. Uh, what I mean by that is there. It's it's just Jesus movies and different things that are going on. So check out. If you haven't been there, please go check out www.ctf-tv.com and uh, you will be blessed. Amen. So let's open up in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Again, we thank you, Lord God, for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, and your love. We thank you, Lord God, that you pour out your spirit upon, Lord God, these programs, these times, we can come together and we can nurture and encourage one another, build up the body of Christ to be more powerful and more uh, uh, understanding of their authority that they have in Christ Jesus. Father, tonight I ask you, Lord God, to open up uh, my heart, Lord God. Use this vessel here as an instrument and a tool for your glory and for your honor. And Father, we, uh, we thank you, Lord God, for what you're about to accomplish and what you've already accomplished. God bless, give us the peace, and Father, most of all, Lord, by the power of your Spirit, be within each and every home, and Lord, wherever everybody may be, wherever they are in the world, that they're watching, and Lord God, that they're blessed, and they're encouraged, and they're built up the words that you have to share tonight. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen, and Amen, Amen. Well, listen, um, Last week, or last night, uh, we, we've been talking about are you producing fruit? And uh, so we went on uh, John 15, and we read from, <clears throat> excuse me, verse 1, verse 10. And that's pretty much what we were talking about last night. And many times, I'm sure you probably have already heard this message over and over and over. What we were talking about, are you producing fruit? And if not producing fruit, who told you that you're not supposed to be producing fruit? And the bottom line up being is we as believers, we are not, it's not an option. It is a command. It is a command from the Lord Jesus Christ that we are to go out and make disciples of others. We are supposed to produce and bear fruit. So that's what we were talking about last night. Tonight uh, is actually in the section uh, John 15 from 9 to 17. So if you have your Bibles, I want you to go over there now. And John 15, again, from 9 to 17, uh, I'm reading it from the uh, Common Names Bible. Uh, and it's, it's, um, tonight's message is, I'm calling it, I Call You Friend. What a blessing it is to even imagine that the God of the universe, the one who's created everything, that now you are in fellowship with him, as we talked yesterday, that if you are attached, if you are what? If you are abiding in him and he's abiding in you, that you will 
produce a tremendous amount of fruit. And because of that, God will be glorified. So tonight, what a blessing it is that he calls us not only his children, but he also calls us a friend. Now, look at that definition of a friend. Uh, sometimes, you know, we call friends friends, and are they friends? They may be acquaintances. A friend is one who sticks closer than a brother, as the Bible says about Jesus. So we realize that, that we have to do the same thing. We have to really, really be transparent. We have to walk in repentance. We have to walk in absolute uh, uh, um, uh, 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 desire to, to see him, to know him, to pray with him, to get to know him even more. So that we can, so that not only does he call us friend, but we can call him friend. Not in the sense that he is um, uh, one that does not deserve the uh, uh, honor of being the king of kings and lord of lords. We don't disgrace that. We don't become so familiar with Jesus that we just say, ah, oh, he's just a buddy of mine. We also have to honor him and who he is. For he is, he is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And we will, and we must, and we always should bow down to him in every aspect of our life. Amen? So, go over again, go to 15, verse 9. We're going to be reading from verse 9 over to 17. And let's just look at it for a little bit here. It says, As the Father loved me, I too have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Isn't that amazing? We've been talking about that for the past six, seven weeks. We've been talking about understanding is that commandments are not, are not an option. It is a requirement by God. Remember, he says, what? He gives, I give you two commandments, which sums it up of all, all men. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, and thy mind, and love thy neighbor as thyself. And those two things right there, Jesus says, I sum it all up. He says, so if you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Because if we don't, if we don't love the Lord God with all our heart, our soul, and our mind, and our strength, what is going to happen is we are going to start walking away because we feel that like we're not inadequate to come to him. Or reading the word and we're not being built up. So therefore, we are not remaining in the love. He never moves. His love is unconditional. No matter what you do, no matter what I do, his love is poured out into your into all the time. Isn't that a blessing? Because his love is not conditional. His word is conditional. He says... If you, and if you, and if you, yes, there are conditions in his word, but his, his love is unconditional. He loves, the, he, he loves the sinner as much as he loves you and I. And when we're walking in righteousness, there's no difference in love. He doesn't love us greater or to love us more. We just abide in his love. And it says, just as I kept my father's commandments, and remain in his love. So Jesus is used as an illustration. Listen, he says, if you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I kept my Father's commandments, and I remain in his love. So, as he has explained, remember the last, the last one we were talking about, we were talking about what? Remaining in him, attached to the vine. Attached to where he is the lifeblood. He is the lifeblood of our lives. Without him, we are helplessly lost. You cannot do it on your own. You can't bear fruit on your own. No matter how much you think you, no matter how much you think you got it all figured out, you can't do it. You can't do God's, God's job, God's, God's plan in your life for the completion. You cannot do it in your own strength, by your own, your own uh, 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 beliefs or your own consideration that, hey, I, I, I can do it. No, you can't. I can do nothing. Jesus even said, I do nothing except the Father 
shows me or tells me. He does nothing unless he hears from God. So we should be in that same place. That this, this, listen, that I don't want to do anything unless I'm listening to the Spirit of Christ, which that Spirit of Christ is in us, which was in Christ Jesus, because Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father. He's interceding for us all the time. In verse 11, it says, I have said these things to you so that my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. What an awesome, awesome thing says that he, that his joy, his joy is now in us. That joy, that joy that was set before him that he could endure the cross, it is now complete. It is now complete. So we realize that guess what? When we're attached, when we are, when we are attached to the vine and we're abiding by his commandments, we also see that guess what? We are nothing more but a conduit to bear fruit. If we're not bearing fruit, we talked about it yesterday. God says that he's going to, as the vine dresser, he says, I'm going to cut that off because I'm not going to allow that, that nourishment and it's not producing anything. It is a waste. As a farmer, as a, as a my brother has a, um, a, a, a hundred and I think was one hundred and fifty or three hundred trees. I can't remember apple trees, and, and they start if they're not bearing fruit or they start uh, not uh, producing buds. In order that you, he does cut it. There's no hope. It's a new tree in because it's going to bear fruit. Anything that does not bear fruit is useless, even to the kingdom of God. Bearing fruit, and we're going to talk about a little bit more of that as we go on tonight. Amen? It says in verse 12, This is my commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. God loved us so much that he sent his only son to go all the way to the cross, to be persecuted, to be mutilated, to be recognized. To die on the cross so that we could be reconciled back to the Father. And he says, this is my commandment. Love each other. He doesn't say, uh, this is just a uh, suggestion. It's not a suggestion. Now, think about that right now today in the body of Christ. We have churches against churches. We have people inside churches that, that are, are constantly nagging and talking about people. And that's not life. That's not, that's nothing more but flesh trying to get your own way, trying to get what you want, that human belief, instead of that God, God divine persuasion, which is faith. See, all the things that we've been talking about, if you look back and go back and look, it all culminates to this, to be able to bear fruit. Amen? So it says, no one, in verse 13, no one has greater love than give one's life for, for one's friend. Now, I want to share this because this is something that the Lord had spoken to me several years ago. In ministry, one of the greatest gifts, one of the greatest gifts of love, listen to what I'm about to tell you. The greatest gift of love is to take your time, is to take your, uh, your wisdom, Take uh, your finances, take whatever it is individually and give it away. When you do that, listen to me, when you do that, what is happening is you are dying to self and you are literally allowing someone else to be able to be blessed, to grow, to be, to be nurtured. Listen, no one has greater love than to give one's life for one's friends. So, as a, as a minister, or at each and every one of you, no matter what you do, the more you give to someone else, what happens is, in a sense, you're laying down your life. You're laying down your time. You're laying down your energy. You're laying down that stuff. And guess what? You know why you're blessed? You're blessed because you are dying to self. Because what you are doing is, there's no greater love than to lay down your agenda and to build up someone else. There is no greater love. Jesus died on the cross so that we would live. 
He, he took on the pain. He took on the suffering. He took on all of that so that we would be able to live. So he said, no, no one has greater love than to give one's life for a friend. And as I said, many years ago, the Lord said to me, I was really dealing with some situations. And God said, you know what you're doing? You're literally giving your life away. You're dying every time you give of yourself to someone else. And there's no greater love than that. There's no greater love to get that which you have and get rid of it. No greater love, no greater love than give up your agenda, to give up your life, to give up your time, to give up your finances, to give up your wisdom, to give up that which God has given to you. But Jesus says, guess what? There's no greater love. He went all the way to the cross so that we could live. The greatest love, the greatest love is to give of yourself, to die to yourself and give it to someone else. There's no greater love than that. Amen? Verse 14. And so he says, You are my friends. If you do this, if you do, I can you. So, if we're doing it, then we can call him, and he can't call us friends. Listen, if you go back and you go through line after line after line, Allow the Spirit of God to speak to your heart. Let Him show you. Let Him, let him take the Scripture. Because you know what? The Spirit of God, remember Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send you the Spirit. And guess what? He's not only going to be with you, He's going to be in you. He's going to teach you, guide you, and lead you into all truth. I can share only what I have. But the greatest truth and the greatest love is found in the Spirit of God that's inside of you. That's why I encourage you always to read the Word. What does it say? It says that because if we if we keep His commandments, then we will remain His love. If we know the Word of God, if we know what He says, if we know how He expresses Himself, that you know what? He wants to bless us more than we could even imagine. He wants to bless us more than you can even think of. He wants to bless you as a son, as a daughter. He wants to bless you as a friend. In verse 15, he says, I don't call you servants any longer because you don't know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends because everything I heard from my father, I have made known to you. A good friend, I shared this with my daughter Rochelle the other day, I, if you talked about the, the, the four windows of, of our lives, and you know, that's very, very interesting is, is in this particular scripture, and he says, he says, I call you friends. Why? Because everything that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. So think about that. Why am I growing? I'm praying you're growing. Why are you growing? It's because the Father has revealed it through the Spirit of God to you. And he does that because he loves you. Isn't that even a greater, greater desire to be more and to learn more and let him love you more? Every time we read the Word of God, he is pouring out. It's a love letter to us. He is pouring out. He's pouring out his Spirit. He's pouring out his wisdom. He's pouring out his grace, his, mercy, his love to us each and every time when we start to read the word of God. Hallelujah. Verse 16, this is important. You didn't choose me, but I choose you and appointed you so that you could go and what? Produce fruit. And so that your fruit could last. Here we go, full circle around what we talked about yesterday. If we abide in him and his word abides in us, the Bible says that whatever we ask of the Father will give it to us. We also see that he says that we abide by his commandment that he will continue to love us. If we don't, then the love is not there. We see it here that he says that I am choosing... I chose you. I chose you. 
I, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, God of the universe, chose you. One day, he said, you know what? I'm going to speak to Eric. And when he spoke to Eric, I came to a place that I really realized, you know what? I needed a Savior. He chose me, and he chose you. He chose you as for a reason. Listen, I'm going to read it again. We've been talking about it as we talked yesterday, and we're going to finish it up today. Amen? And we're going to see it. He says, you didn't choose me. You did not choose him. He chose you. And because he chose you, he says, but I chose you and appointed you so that you could go and produce fruit. So we are called by commandment. We are called. We were chosen by God to be able to produce fruit. If we're not producing fruit, that's why God can cut it off and say, that's it. So I'm encouraging you tonight. I'm encouraging you, seek the Lord. I'm encouraging you, ask the Spirit of God. What is it that you want me to do? How can not only I bear fruit, but Lord, start to bear fruit in my life so that I start to learn more, desire more. You know, all you have to do is ask the Spirit of God to be a passion for the Word of God. And if you keep praying that, what's going to happen is He's going to give you a desire that, let me tell you, you just, you're just going to be picking up the Bible all the time and reading because what's happening is you're getting revelation and revelation. And you're getting new, new wow moments. You're getting new, new, uh, uh, new rhema word, new rhema word, which is going to stick there. And the more you do that, as we've been talking about for seven weeks, you'll be overcome the enemy. And not only that, but guess what? You will understand what faith is. You'll be able to operate. You'll be able to step out. You'll be able to pray. You'll be able to do those things. Why? Because God's word is in you. Why? Because he loves you. He calls you friend. You were chosen to produce fruit. It's not my job. It's not my job as a pastor to make sure that you're producing fruit. It's my job to check the, 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 the plant. It's my job to check and say, okay, how can I see or how, what can we do to maybe get this fruit? Maybe I have to do throw some more fertilizer underneath. Amen. Maybe we've got to water a little bit more. Maybe we need a little bit of sunshine. Whatever it may be, there's something that, that's what a pastor does. That's his job. His job is not going to church on Sunday morning at, 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 at well, I'll use it, use it as an example. Hold on one second. I was popping out of here. <laughs> my microphone. Amen. But it's, my job is not just to go on a Sunday morning and preach the gospel and say, hey, I'm out of here, I'm done. I'm done for the rest of the week. My job is seven days a week, 24 hours a day. I am always on call. I'm always on call. Now, I'm not asking for a pat on the back. I accepted the call when God, when God called me. When God called me. But yet, through all of that, there are many times that God takes me to different areas and different places, different ministries, different things, just like with CTF TV. God, if we're willing to be used by him to produce fruit, produce fruit, produce other people, so they can produce other people and produce other people, and they can continue to grow and move forward. Amen? It says, uh, as a result, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. So let's go back here. Listen. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you could go and produce fruit and so that your fruit could remain. As a result, as a result, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. So, from 16 all the way down, we see here in this particular scripture, he says, I've chosen you to produce fruit. And because I've chosen you to produce fruit, the result is, by producing fruit, the result is you can ask of the Father whatever you want in the name of Jesus Christ, and he will give it to you. So, do you want to know how to be blessed? 
You want to know how to be blessed? Be attached to the vine. Allow the Spirit of God to help you to grow. The more you grow, the more you're blessed. It's not about possessions. It's not about he's going to give you a bigger, or a bigger house or a bigger... But guess what? You're going to have the peace that surpasses all human understanding. And isn't that what we really desire? That's what the world's looking for. The world outside is looking for peace. Peace. You see it all over right now. There is so much turmoil. There is so much anger. There is so much bitterness. There is so much jealousy. It's all out there. Why? Because they're looking for something to resolve and give a peace in their heart. And it will not be found in the word. It is world. It's only found in the word and through Christ Jesus by being what? By being attached or abiding in the divine. And then in verse 17, he says, I give you these commandments so that you can love each other. So we see, yesterday, we were talking about producing fruit. And tonight, we're seeing here that God calls us friend. But he says, I call you friend because I want to now ask you, I need you to go and do what I've called you to do. I've called you to go out and produce fruit. If you go and produce fruit, then you could ask whatever you want, and I'll give it to you. What an awesome God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. If he owns the cattle on a thousand hills, if the earth is his and the fullness thereof, guess what? He can provide everything in your heart's desire as long as we are abiding in Christ Jesus. Amen? We're going to shift just a little bit, just a little bit, but I'm going to go over to Luke chapter 9, and we're going to read from verse 57 to 62. Now, I want you to, this is about love. It's about listening to and being a part of producing fruit. Part of producing fruit is something called discipline. It means that you just can't do it periodically, just like a farmer. Probably go out there once a week, maybe, and just casually tills the ground. No, he does it every day. He may do it another day, or he does it in a consistent basis. So in order for us to bear fruit, we have to make a decision. And tonight, you make that decision. That decision is this, that I am going to discipline myself by the Spirit of God to start to allow the Spirit Spirit to teach me, guide me, guard me, and start to show me how I can produce fruit in my own life and in others. So in Luke chapter 9, verse 10 and 62, it says, And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man unto, uh, said unto, unto him, Lord, I will follow thee where thou, thou go. I've heard this all the time. In 27 years of ministry, I've had people come up to me and say, Pastor, I love you so much that, you know what, if you move someplace else or whatever, I go. And yet, you know what, almost every single person who has said that are no longer around. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you say because sometimes we can entrap ourselves by making a promise. If you, listen to me, God is a covenant God. That means that everything that he has is a covenant. He cannot lie. We have to be willing to say this, that we have to be able to not, if we can't make a promise, if we can't make a promise, don't make it. Because what you're doing, you're setting yourself up. Sin. And we don't even realize that, that it's sin. So here it says, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said unto him, foxes have holes, Birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said to another, he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, let the dead bury the, bed, the dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Now I'm going to stop right there because Jesus said up. Setting up something called discipline. Something called discipline. 
How many times Jesus uses as example when he's talking to, he says, Lord, suffer me first. I, I, let me go bury my father. Let me go bury my father. And Jesus said, let the, let the dead bury the dead. Now you might look at that and go, man, that's very ignorant, isn't it? That's very ignorant. But here's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. What is the very first thing? Listen to priorities. Listen to what I'm saying tonight. Priorities. There are priorities in our life. Number one is God. Love Him with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. That's the number one priority. Number two, to marry your wife or your husband is your next priority. After that, come children. Don't put your children above your spouse. After your children, then comes family and ministry. So what I'm saying is, even in my life, for years ago, man, I put ministry right up, sometimes right above God. Because I wanted to please God so bad. And God said, you're out of order. You're out of order. So here's a very similar situation. He, Jesus is talking about, are you willing to follow me? Are you willing to deny yourself? Are you willing to realize that, guess what? You're going to be put places where you're not going to like. Are you willing to suffer that? Jesus is telling us, listen to me. Jesus is telling us, because on the other side, remember what he said. He said, if I call you friend and you are abiding in me and what, you keep my commandments, you can ask whatever you will and my Father will give it to you. So there's a commitment there. That commitment is that we must, must, number one, put him first in every scenario, in every situation. That means Jesus was telling them, listen, are you going to your house? Are you going to put your, your, your place where you sleep your head? or whatever, you're going to put that before me? Are you going to put your family before me? Are you going to do all that or are you going to make sure that I am number one in your life? That no matter what, I love my wife. I love her dearly. But ultimately, and she knows that God's number one. God's number one. And she also knows that I put her above our, our daughters and, and, and above, my, above my grandsons. See, the thing that we realize, there is priority, and God honors priority. Amen? Hallelujah. And then it says, he says, listen, he says, let the dead bury the dead. Go to the king of God. Our job, no matter where we're at, no matter what location or who we are, whether we're family, whether we're with friends, whether we're a job, our job is to what? Bear fruit. That's our job. No matter where we're at, no matter what we're doing, no matter we go to Acme, we go to the Wawa, wherever it is, is to bear fruit. Is that people will see that we are the friends of God, that we are who he says we are. And believe it. Believe it and walk ye in it. Because that's what he wants for us. He wants us. He wants be blessed. He says, guess what? If we're doing all that, he said, you can ask whatever you want. And he says, I'll give it to you. That's an awesome God we serve. But it, it is conditional. It's conditional. Bearing fruit is not conditional. It is a command. He says, bear it. He says, I want you, number one, number one, you should be bearing fruit inside your life. If you are the same way that you were six months ago or a year ago or uh, uh, two years ago, you're not bearing fruit. And you wonder why maybe it seems like God's so far away. Because you're not abiding any longer. There's no fruit. Remember, there can be no fruit unless the branch is abiding in the vine. We are just a conduit. You can't bear fruit. The fruit is only produced through the Spirit of God through you so that God can be glorified. We can't produce our own. When we do it, guess what? We are going to produce plastic fruit. Plastic fruit that is not edible, it's worthless. 
And that's where pride comes in. That's where we want to do nothing more, but guess what? We want to say, hey, look what I've done. Look what we've done. We haven't done. If we are just a conduit, if we're a pipe, and all a pipe is, a pipe cannot bear fruit. All it does is allows water or allows something to go through it. We're just a conduit. We have to stop getting, trying to get the glory for what we're doing. It is not us. It is the Spirit of God. It is, it is, being, it is being attached to the vine, a vine vine, so that the fruit can start to multiply. God says, then I'm going to, I'm going to bless you. I, 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 whatever you ask, I'll give it to you. Amen? Hallelujah. And then he said in verse 61, and there's another one he said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me go and bid them farewell that are at my house. And Jesus said to him, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom. Lord, I, 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 I oh, well, you know what? I, I can't go to church. I can't go to study. I can't, I, you know, there's a show on tonight. There's something going on. I'm just being real. There are things that become priorities that are not priorities in the kingdom. And we have to be careful because it's very easy. As Jesus is using this, there are three scenarios here. Three scenarios. Four scenarios. Four scenarios that he is using. I'm encouraging you. Write this down. Go over and read it later on. Luke 9, 57 to 62. So I want to encourage you. Amen? Man, we're almost out of time already. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you tonight. Put your hand to the plow. Put your hand to work. Plow the ground. It's time. We are living in a time right now, I'm going to tell you right now, that God is going to release things to those that are committed to those that are attached, to those that are listening, to those that have ears to hear and eyes to see, God is about to release, release, because I believe it's time. It's time. It's time. We are getting ready. We're coming out of the season. And you know what? Just as we saw yesterday, now all the news is this big, this big hornet, hornet thing. It's just going to be from one thing to another to another to another. That will continue to go on. Are you going to listen to the news, listen to the fear mongers, listen to those that are out there, or are you going to start to plow, start to put your hand to the work, start to do what God's called you to do? It's time to cultivate the ground in your heart by using It's time. It's time to cultivate. It's time to read. It's time to get into the Word. If you're struggling, please find somebody. Find somebody that you can trust and say, hey, listen, can we sit down and talk? I, I do it all the time. And we'll sit down and we'll start discussing and start talking. See, my job is not to pound you over the head. My job is just to share the Word of God with you so that you can what? What I'm doing, what am I doing? I'm I'm actually plowing. I'm cultivating your heart. I'm actually cultivating so that, guess what? So that the seed of the word of God that's planted in your spirit starts to take root. And as it starts to take root, it starts to do what? Produce fruit. And then you are supposed to do the same thing. You are to do the same thing. That's what discipleship is about. Hallelujah. So obey his word and reap the harvest. He has for you. Plow what God's told you to plow. Don't plow in somebody else's field. Don't plow in the lane next to it. Stay in your lane. Plow in your own lane. Do what he has called you to do. Not what somebody else has called you to do. Not what your, your husband or your wife or your children or your boss or, or the neighbor down the street or whoever it is. Or the evangelist on television that says, this is what you need to do. That's why when you're listening to me, back it up, pray, seek the Lord. Make sure you're hearing from what the Spirit of God is telling you to do. Sometimes we need to sit still before Him. Sometimes 
in order to receive instruction. Guess what? God's not going to release you unless you have the information and, and listen, you have the faith down deep inside to do it. If you don't have that faith, he is not going to, he's not going to say, here's what I want you to do. You're going to go, there's no way. There's no way. But if you have that faith, if you have that God divine persuasion that he's persuading you and you know it's deep down inside. It's time. He's saying sometimes be still and know that I am God. Amen. Let God lead your hands. Let God lead your heart. Let God transform your heart. Let God build you up. And let God enlarge you. Let it be a place where he enlarges those he trusts. He gives you more. We saw that in the, in the scripture with the towns. The ten, the five, and the one. The ten, actually ten more. The five got five more. The one ended up giving it to the five and the ten. And he, he was actually literally cut off. Why? Because he didn't produce. Produce. God is in production. And if we are not producing, it's not a matter of producing for our own lives. That's the problem. The problem of the body of Christ, we want to produce so that people can see what we're doing. That is not producing fruit. All that is, is just doing works for the sake of works. It's first and foremost cultivating our heart first. Before we, before God uh, uh, releases you to go out and to produce fruit, more fruit, See, you're going to produce fruit here, but to produce more, guess what? You have to be solidified here in order to go out and do. Amen? Hurt people, hurt people. Healed people, heal people. Hurt people can't heal people. If you're hurt and you go out and you think you can minister, it isn't going to happen. It isn't going to happen. So here's what you need to do. Number one, forget the past. Talked about it all seven weeks. Forget about what yesterday. Remember, all it is is concrete shoes that you can't move forward. Forget the past. Forget the things that are behind you. Move forward in what God has called you to do. He's called you to do some wondrous, wondrous things. In First Chronicles, and we're coming to an end. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him sorrow. That's what Jabez means. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil that it may not grieve me, and God granted him that which he requested. Forget about the pain of the past. It's hindering. That pain in the past, those things that you remember in the past, remember those things that have hurt you. Seek the Lord. The Lord wants to heal, deliver, and set you free. Forget what others told you. Forget what other people have talked about you. Move on. Remember, if you take hold of the plow and you look back, you're not worthy of the kingdom. That's what Jesus says. And I want you to go forward and produce fruit. Produce fruit. For who? Not for me. Not for the church. Not for yourself. Produce fruit for God so that God gets the glory. Remember, we are, the greatest glory we have is to see that what? God is pleased. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen? So let God call bring forth more fruit. So, as I close out, we see this in Ecclesiastes. This is the season for everything. Listen to it. 
everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal. There's a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Listen. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. There's a time to rent, ripping, and a time to sell. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. There's a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. Understanding God has seasons and we are getting ready. We're in it and we're getting ready to see the season of everything. The season that God is going to open up doors for those, listen to me, for those out there who have been crying out, for those that have been patiently waiting, for those that have been, God, when, 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 when? Continue to abide. Continue to abide. Remember, you're just a conduit. God will release. I believe it's time in the season of everything. We're in that season. That's what the message is going to be this Sunday. The season for everything. We're going to be coming into a season that guess what? That we will become. We got to make sure. Listen to what I'm about to tell you and then I'm closing out. You got to make sure that that conduit is not stuck, is not plugged up because you won't bear fruit and there is no nutrients going through and we become absolutely worthless. See, we should be looking through the scenario we're in because God's about to do something and God is about to, it is about to open the season of everything. Amen? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you tonight. We thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, and your love. We thank you, Lord God, for what you have accomplished tonight. I thank you, Lord God, that, Lord, as each and every one who has received the word and held on to the word, and they're going to plant the word, that, Lord, is going to produce fruit in their lives first. That as their lives are cultivated by your word, that they will then start to produce fruit in other people's lives. That, Lord God, that we realize, Lord God, it's not about us. It's not about glorifying. It's not about looking at what I can do. But, Lord, what can you do? Lord, how can you use a vessel like us to be able to glorify you? Father, I thank you, Lord, that right now, Lord God, you are in the blessing business. That, Lord, that we don't look for our eyes, Lord God. We, we look through the eyes of faith. Because, Lord, we walk by faith and not by sight. And, Father, we thank you, Lord God, that what is going around us right now, Lord God, that you have already stated. Lord, you have already changed it. You are already working things out. That, Lord, that all this frustration, all the bitterness, all the hatred, all the anger... Father, we stay focused on you. We stay plugged into you. We abide you. And Lord God, you said, Lord God, that when we keep your commandment, Lord, that you love us as a friend. And you said, Lord God, that you would provide for us whatever we ask. Father, thank you for the abundance of everything. And we thank you for it. glorify you, Lord. We honor you and we give you praise. In Jesus' name and every Said, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. We love you. So as of right now, there won't be any Bible study tomorrow night. We've got a lot of work to do. Get ready for the National Day of Prayer. Thursday night, tune in, 6.30. We're here until 8. It's going to be an awesome, awesome evening. Go to www.ctf-tv.com. There's other ways, but that's going to be your best bet. Amen. Love you.
We fuck with you. Excuse me. And God bless you.